Thank you to the Patreon members for their support of the channel. The folktales were ready to make the most of a new season. With the river flowing, the beavers could replant their crops and begin pumping drinkable water again. They had pines popping up at their tree farm, and they could turn those logs into planks now that they had more water wheels. And they could use those planks to build the mega platform and fulfill the vision of their recently passed leader, Vrisco. They even had an extra scientist working now. And oh yeah, they had one more important thing. Four iron teeth beavers they had taken prisoner and now had to deal with. Rozzy and his entourage had come in peace, but the folktales were too suspicious and fearful, and now the leader of the Iron Teeth was trapped in a makeshift prison, and the folktales had a dilemma on their, uh, pause. The folktales were currently leaderless, and frankly, they had no idea what to do. They needed someone to take charge and get them back on track. Frisco's daughter, Vamu, was prepared to do just that, but unfortunately, she needed to prove herself. The beavers weren't sexist or anything, it's just, I mean, Frisco had been a guy, right? But Vamu was popular and convinced the colony to at least hear her out. So the next day, the whole family gathered to listen to Vamu present, but Vamu had a plan to get and keep the family's attention. Blame everything on the Iron Teeth. She claimed that beavers with gray fur can't be trusted, that the beavers who had come with gifts were actually spies, that the Iron Teeth were preparing an attack. Vamu played on the suspicions and uncertainty in her family and gave them an enemy they had to come together to defeat. And of course, since she was the one who brought this threat to their attention, the family agreed that Vamu should be the one to lead them, though her first act as leader was a confusing one. She let Razi and his men go. The Iron Teeth were beside themselves with worry. Rozzy had promised to be back before the end of the dry season, but he was still missing. And now the beavers didn't know what to do with themselves. They were in a holding pattern, just maintaining what they had. But how long would they have to keep waiting? The colony was leaderless and lacking direction. And more importantly, they were worried about Rozzy and the others. They didn't have proof, but they suspected the folktales had done something treacherous. Rozzy should have never trusted them. He knew what they were capable of. They blew up Rijamayar. Maybe they blew up Rozzy. Rozzy too. But what were the Iron Teeth supposed to do about it? Rozzy had left them with work to do and a promise he would return. Maybe Rozzy had a plan, and if the family jumped into action, they might ruin the whole thing. Or maybe Rozzy was in trouble, and if they didn't act, then Rozzy may never get out of it. What were they supposed to do? They needed more information. But after talking it to death, the beavers agreed on a compromise. They would wait one more day, and if Rozzy wasn't back, they would mobilize the colony and go get him back. The Iron Teeth didn't want war, but they weren't afraid to fight, especially to rescue, or avenge, members of their family. The Iron Teeth were strong and ready, but of course they hoped it wouldn't come to war. Of course they hoped this period of peace would continue. Of course they hoped Rozzy would show up safe and sound, that it would all just be a big misunderstanding. But they couldn't count on hopes. They had to prepare for the bad. So they geared up for action while they waited out the day. At sundown, the family would march on the folktales to have it out with their cousins. The family was ready, physically and mentally. So imagine their surprise when, just before sunset, just before the beavers went to war, Rozzy and his compatriots returned to them, safe and sound, but with quite the story to tell. The Iron Teeth were overwhelmed with relief and came together to celebrate and to hear the explanation. Rozzy told them what had happened, how the folktales had all forgotten about the Iron Teeth, how the folktales had imprisoned them, but then they let them go. This upset the family, of course, but Rozzy believed it was a misunderstanding and that peace was still possible and worth pursuing. So for now, the beavers went back to bed, happy to have their leader back with them, content to let the matter sit for now and not jump to conclusions or rush into conflict. Maybe the two families could get along. But the morning rudely interrupted their hopes for peace. Turns out, the folktales released Rozzy so they could follow him back to the Iron Teeth settlement, and they left the family with a wet surprise. They completely boarded up their dam, and now the Iron Teeth's little creek was thoroughly flooding the entire settlement, buildings and crops and trees all being drowned in water. And the real irony is that the folktales didn't even remember the time the Iron Teeth destroyed their mega dam and flooded their whole settlement the same way. And make no mistake, this was an act of aggression, just like that had been. Clearly, the folktales didn't want peace. To be fair, the folktales didn't really want war. They just wanted to send a message to show the Iron Teeth who they were dealing with and that they shouldn't be messed with. So yes, Vamu had released Razi just to follow him home, but now they'd made their point and they could get back to work. 
And perfect timing too, because the oak trees had started maturing. So now they'd have plenty of logs to make plenty of planks to continue with Briscoe's mega platform. So between that and standing up to those sneaky iron teeth, the Folktales were feeling pretty good about things. Good enough to focus on new projects and growth. You see, this river was wide and the water just kind of went everywhere. But maybe if the beavers could control the flow, the water would be more useful to them. So Vamu commissioned levees be built to redirect water toward their settlement. They were bringing in plenty of logs, so construction shouldn't be an issue. And it would be a good test to see how the beavers might make the most of their complicated living situation. The folktales were facing a much more challenging region than the Iron Teeth, but they had already overcome a lot, and they weren't afraid of a good challenge. So the builders got to work constructing the levees to block the river from running off in that direction. But progress was on the slow side, and the family had grown a lot, so Vamu assigned more beavers to work as builders. A full builder brigade would finish the levees in no time. Thankfully, the Folktales disruption was an easy fix. They just had to break the dam so the excess water could flow downriver, and the beavers would be able to get back to work. The flooding diminished quickly, and soon it was like nothing had happened at all. Although they needed to rebuild the dam before the next drought, or the colony would be in big trouble. And though the water had subsided quickly, the Iron Teeth's anger did not. They already wanted revenge for what happened to Rozzy, and the flooding only motivated them more. So they gathered to ask Rozzy what the plan was for retaliation. But to their surprise, Rozzy told them to wait. They couldn't lose focus on their own progress, their own growth. They couldn't sacrifice that just to get back at the folktales. They had a dam to build. They had added a new farmhouse and planted a field of cassavas. And they were about to begin work on something big. A second large water wheel. The Iron Teeth wanted to invest heavily into industry. And for that, they needed even more power. So they couldn't drop everything and go fight with the folktales right now. But Rozzy assured them they would make a move soon. If they could just be patient. The Folktales had their eye on a potential problem. Their family was growing, but their food supply was shrinking. They had nearly starved to death before, and they did not want to go through that again. Luckily, the next morning, a fresh crop of carrots had begun sprouting, so they weren't in a dire situation at the moment, but it was something to stay on top of for sure. Meanwhile, the builder's hut had been completed, so there was now double the number of builders in the colony, and they were making good progress on the levees. Each completed piece redirected water toward the settlement, and already the beavers felt they were wading in deeper water, and the water Water wheels seemed to be spinning a little faster and cranking out a bit more power. After struggling through near starvation and a generational death wave, these beavers were finally accomplishing the most basic of beaver tasks, building dams to control and benefit from the flow of water. There was one unexpected outcome from this project though. As the beavers built levees to stop the flow of water in this direction, that meant the only thing left on that side was the bad water. They had increased the concentration of good water on their side of the levees, which was great for their settlement now, but that increased the concentration of bad water on the other side of the levees. Hopefully that wouldn't be a problem for them later, but Vamu was happy with the short-term win. Speaking of wins, the Folktales were building more and bigger housing to continue their growth, and enough of the mega platform had been built to finally relocate the district center. Now even more of the land was available for farming, and the district center stood on the mega platform like a monument to their success. The large your house was finished, their food supply was doing okay, and there was more food being harvested. Overall, these beavers were really crushing it. And the cherry on top, the folktales had stuck it to the iron teeth and really shown them who they were dealing with. They weren't expecting to have any more unwanted visitors or problems from those stupid gray beavers. And for now, they wouldn't have any problems from the Iron Teeth. Rozzy was still asking the family to wait and focus on work while he formulated a plan. They had trees to chop down and plenty of logs to build with and a second water wheel under construction. But secretly, Rozzy was still hoping they could avoid war, so he didn't want to escalate things. Surely war wasn't inevitable, right? And look at that, the cassavas were ready. So it was time to build a fermenter to make those cassavas into an edible treat. This was meaningful progress for the Iron Teeth, and not just another thing to distract them from wanting revenge on the folktales. Man, Rozzy really wanted to give Peace a chance. But would he be able to keep control of his family? Maybe if they all enjoyed the deliciousness of fermented cassavas, they would forget all about it. And though the beavers did like the new treat, even Rozzy knew it wasn't enough to distract the Iron Teeth. The beavers wanted their revenge, and it didn't seem like they would settle for anything less. They were willing to listen to Rozzy. They were willing to be patient. They were willing to do the work while they waited, to build the water wheel and ferment the cassavas and do whatever else Rozzy told them to do. But then, they wanted to teach those folktales a lesson. Rozzy tried to hype up the progress. They had enough power now to greatly expand their industries, but the Iron Teeth never lost sight of their revenge. 
and now Rozzy had a problem. If he gave the family what they wanted, it could hurt them in the long run. But if he didn't give the family what they wanted, it could lead to an all-out rebellion. The folktales weren't in the mood for a revolt, but they wouldn't say no to a new tasty treat because they had been farming potatoes, but you can't eat those raw, and they had stored up quite a few of them. So they set out to build a grill which could cook the potatoes. And with the Builder Brigade on it, these beavers would have grilled potatoes in no time. Just needed the potatoes and some logs, and there you go. But then the colony had their first injury when the beaver July hurt their tail, so the builders had to make some medical beds so he could recover. The folktales were on a roll, and it was time to tackle something new. Bamu commissioned a bridge to the Badwater Island, and the Builder Brigade got to work making it happen. If they played it right, they could have a whole network of bridges and platforms. Oh, and the grilled potatoes were insanely popular, as expected. And as excited as the folktales were to be firing on all cylinders, there was still a looming danger hanging over the settlement. The beavers needed to prepare, because a drought was coming. And droughts have a way of really messing things up for unprepared beavers. Rozzy had the Iron Teeth build a hauling post so that any unemployed beavers could get to work hauling materials to job sites. He had the builders construct another water pump so they could top off their tanks. He installed a shower where the beavers could wet their fur. Ah, that's nice. Rozzy was desperate to delay the conflict as long as possible, indefinitely if he could. So he kept finding jobs to do, trying to distract his family from their thoughts of retribution. He might not be able to dissuade them from wanting revenge, but at least he could keep them busy. As long as he didn't overextend their trust or tip his own hand, this might work. So far, conversations were still revolving around the folktales. No one was speaking out against Rozzy, so keep him busy. That was Rozzy's strategy. They built rooftop terraces, a new and improved model. Surely that was enough to demotivate these beavers from their pursuit of vengeance. But no, the Iron Teeth still seemed set on their plan. And then, just when Rozzy had completely run out of ideas, a drought was approaching. An odd thing to be excited about, to be sure, but it was something else for the family to worry about, and not something Rozzy had contrived for a change. Maybe, just maybe, this would finally cool the Iron Teeth's frustrations. The folktales were preparing for the coming dry season. They were harvesting the last of the crops, they had a decent amount of food stocked up, and their water storage was all topped off. The builders were almost done with the new bridge, and they had a good supply of logs to use during the drought. They were as ready as they were going to be, and hopefully this dry season would be short and painless. One more good night's sleep, and the next day, the drought began. The river dried up, except near the deep pools, and the land and crops went dry. The beavers were used to it at this point, but thank goodness they were next to a deep pool. The crops were dead, but they should have enough food, and they could keep grilling potatoes during the drought. So they got to work rearranging their industry, since the water wheels were shut down anyways, and that got them thinking about what else they could accomplish before the water came back. This whole region was one big unruly riverbed, but the folktales had already proven they could control it if they were strategic. Maybe they could implement even more strategy. But they were getting ahead of themselves. The lumber mills weren't operational, but they had a small stockpile of planks. So they built a way further up the hill to build more houses. Not the most glamorous project, but it was important. And their little village was starting to look pretty cool. And once they were finished building, they still had plenty of logs, so they added another lumber mill. And then they still had logs. So they took the plunge and started building more levees on the other side of the settlement this time. This wasn't going to redirect that much of the river, but it was a start. And if the beavers hurried, they could finish the levees before before the dry season ended. Of course, the drought affected the terraces region as well, and much of the area turned brown as the river dried up. But since the Iron Teeth had repaired their dam, things didn't change much for them. Their water wheels stopped, so their industries shut down, and they had to stop the water pumps. But for the most part, things were normal. Too normal. The beavers were tired of waiting. They brought a formal grievance to Rozzy on behalf of, well, literally everyone except Rozzy. They demanded that Rozzy take action against the folktales, and it was heavily implied that the consequence of inaction would be mutiny. And now Rozzy truly had a conundrum on his paws. Risk the family's well-being by acting on their demands, or risk his own neck to protect his family? The Iron Teeth were giving him till the end of the dry season to decide, and Rozzy was understandably avoiding his family as much as possible, but it certainly seemed like war was inevitable. So would Rozzy endorse it and lead them, or oppose it and be removed as leader? He had tried his best to distract his family, to put off the decision as long as he could, but Rozzy couldn't avoid it any longer. He had to answer to the family, so he called the beavers together to share his big announcement. The folktales were almost successfully through the dry season once again, and they were nearly done with the levees. It wasn't a huge project, but it was nice to get it done in a timely fashion. Vamu had led the family well this season, and they were glad they had agreed to follow her. 
Not only had they succeeded at home, but they had fired a warning shot at the Iron Teeth. No way that was going to blow up in their face, right? Hey everyone, Lieutenant Dan here. Thanks for watching this episode of Beaver Tales. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Things are really starting to heat up and I'm excited to show you where this story is going. Thanks again for watching and thanks again to the Patreon members for the support of the channel. I hope you stick around and check out the other fun stuff happening here at Lieutenant Dan Productions. You guys have a fantastic day.